Hey everybody, this is Brian, and today we're discussing multidimensional arrays. Now for the record, this is about the fifth time I've recorded this because I keep screwing up. The reason why I keep screwing up is because, yes, even with a lot of programming experience, this is a very difficult topic to really master. What is a multidimensional array? A multidimensional array is an array of arrays. Why would you use it? To be honest, there's very few real-world applications that use these. Um, trying to think of a very simple example. You can make a chessboard, a tic-tac-toe game, things of that nature. All right, let's just dive right in. You've seen the array structure before. We're making a simple array, five items in it. Now what we're going to say is you have five positions in line. Each position in line has two pieces of identification. You've got five people. Each person at each position should have two pieces of ID on them. What does that look like when we try to program it? Line. 0, position 0 equals, and we'll just count backwards here, 99. So if you have like a grid, position 0, 0, in other words, the first position in the first array and the first position in the second array is 99. And let's just do line 0, item 1, so the second item in the first position, 98. And let's just do a little copy and paste magic here. Ninety-seven and ninety-six. Now let's explain this a little bit here. We're only doing the first two positions in line, just so we can fit everything on the screen. The first position, these two pieces of identification are ninety-nine and ninety-eight. Let's see, position zero, item zero, item one. The second person position 1, item 0 is 97. Position 1, item 1, 96. Now one thing you cannot do is try to access that directly. For example, if we try to say the first position is 100. Well, you can't do that. Let's actually compile this so you can see what happens. E Would you like to continue? No. What it's saying is cannot convert from int to int brackets. Well, the brackets denote an array. So if you're sitting there going, what does that mean? It means an array. In plain English, this is saying cannot convert from integer to an array. The reason why is because each of these items is an array. So it's expecting an array item. Makes sense? Well, if it doesn't, just rewind, listen a couple times, see if you can figure it out. All right, now how to output this. See out. And let's just work a little copy and paste magic here. And let's run that. First off, before I run this, what do you think it's going to print out? The one position, item zero. If you guessed 97, you are absolutely correct. Now, one thing you should know is that you can do something like this. Now, looking at that, you're going to go, now Brian, that's going to generate an error message. Because we've only got two positions. Well, no. C++ allows us to make multi-dimensional arrays of varying sizes. So you can have the first one be, you know, two positions, and the second to be 300, the third one to be four, whatever you want to do. And what this does is it automatically creates that variable, or sorry, creates that value and puts it in that position. To prove that, let's just run this. Sure enough, there's our 93. Now what happens if we try to grab the third position, which we haven't created yet because it's right here? Well, what C++ does is it generates that position because it had to expand the array out to accommodate four positions, but it didn't assign a variable. So when we run this, it's going to generate an error message. Yep, variable line being used without being initialized. And of course we get some random garbage that which is at that memory location. To fix that you would simply simply add that in here. Sure enough there's our 55. Now you have to be careful with that because if you start iterating through this array you're going to find certain bugs in your program and random crashes. So be very careful with that. Now, how would you go about initializing an array like this? 
Let's just do this. Mm, let's say zero one. Whoops. Help if I could spell today. Zero one zero one. So let's. What we're doing here is we are saying shove all these values into the line into the item. So this is the first item. This is the second item. I know that looks confusing, but let's just run this and find out. Position zero. Okay, so let's actually change some values around here so we can see exactly what's going on. What we're saying is the second position in line, the the one, we want that to be 99. Let's run this and see what happens here. Sure enough, 99. Now it looks confusing, and albeit it is confusing. Uh, another way of looking at it would be something along this line. This is for illustrative purposes only. So what you're saying is you have an array of items. This is the first, this is the second. That's how the compiler sees it. So. Uh, this is Brian. Now we covered multi-dimensional arrays, um, something that, uh, I'll be brutally honest, I don't see a whole lot of real-world applications using. There are better ways of doing it. I'm just covering this because uh, it's you know, a rite of passage. You need to know this, and you will run into this out in the real world, and you need to understand how it works and why. So I hope you found this video educational and entertaining. Thank you for watching.